Not too long ago, I worked on this new Acoustic Dimensions um, 7030 stereo receiver, and it had a multitude of problems. One of the problems was that a power supply voltage was missing, a B plus voltage, and it was a 22.5 volts here that I'm looking at. I pulled the, the transistor and the Z node because everything on the other side and the capacitors because on the other side there was glue from the capacitors which had evidently gotten everywhere and was totally corrosive so I cleaned everything up and of course I had assumed the Zener diode was actually bad because here I think I did do one voltage test it was like zero volts and you run across these um, circuits like this in these older receivers built around then I think it was this was like in the must have been the mid to late 70s this thing was built um, these things are called series regulators and these transistors are sometimes called pass transistors or at least they used to be called that because basically what they do is they pass the current uh, the current doesn't go through the a Zener diode mostly it goes through this transistor here and you see on the other side of the component board I'm look I'm actually looking at it from the solder side now and but on the other side there you'll see like a often they'll have like a plastic mounted transistor with a heat sink that's because the transistor is basically uh, taking up all of that heat um, basically it's kind of acting like a big resistor and of course if the transistor acts like a big resistor that means there's going to be heat produced so um, basically you see this a lot of times that the base will be hooked up to the Zener diode of course the Zener diode is always hooked up um, the opposite way than a normal diode is of course here where I'm pointing at that's of course the cathode and here the cathode is uh, connected to positive. This is a NPN transistor. So NPN, of course, this voltage here where I'm pointing at is collector being highest and then base middle highest and then, of course, this uh, emitter lowest. So, um, and I think I think what it is here, your, your emitter voltage is your output voltage. That's going to be this voltage your Zener voltage here minus the base to emitter voltage and how this thing works basically well the base is held to a fixed voltage by the Zener of course and then say for example if the load if the load the load being here on the left here um, the rest of the circuitry because over here this is power supply uh, when the load basically it increases uh, this is going to pull the emitter voltage down and this is basically going to increase the pulling this down remember this is steady here pulling this down that's going to increase the difference between the emitter and the base that this voltage is going to get larger and that means the transistor is going to pass more current and of course that's going to go ahead and end up decreasing the uh, collector emitter resistance did I get that straight? Kind of makes sense, yeah. And when the load decreases, the emitter voltage is going to go ahead and go up. And that, in turn, decreases the base emitter voltage or the base emitter bias. And so the transistor is going to pass less current. Um, basically then increasing the collector emitter resistance. So, in, in my case... Um, I thought it was a shorted Zener, um, so what I'm going to do now is just simulate what would happen if it in fact was a, shortest, a shorted Zener, which it in fact was. So all I'm going to do is clip an alligator clip from here, from the anode to the cathode, and then we'll go ahead and measure the voltage right here at the output. Also for those people that aren't aware of it, these little triangles here, that just means ground. This anode here is attached to ground and of course this little uh, 
electrolytic uh, 220 microfarad capacitor. Um, one side is attached to ground also. That's all these little triangles uh, stand for, for those people that are not um, all that familiar with these with these kind of circuits or um, electronics repair. So here is the, I've got the power off now. Also I'm running this thing to a dim bulb tester and a variable isolation transformer. So this is that uh, pass transistor and here is the Zener diode right here. Here's the two leads, terminals. What I'm going to do is just get an alligator clip and where's that thing at? Short across that and right here to the left this is the emitter the middle lead here the middle terminal is the collector and of course this is the base because it is actually connected to the um, zener so let me go ahead and try to get a grip I gotta push this metal in I don't wanna short something out even though I do have a dim bulb set up there okay um so next we will go ahead well first we're gonna first we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and we'll measure here the emitter voltage so let me go ahead and do that okay I went ahead now and I got the unit on and let's go ahead and check the voltage here I think it was 21.5 off the top of my head when I had fixed this thing it's supposed to be 22.5 but I think maybe the guy at the counter when I bought this thing I think maybe he gave me could be he gave me the wrong zener I'm not sure I don't think I mispronounced it or anything anyways um so let me go ahead let's check the output now again I'm uh, got the multimeter test lead to the emitter of this pass transistor which is the output so so 21.25 so now I'm going to go ahead and short across the um, Zener diode so I'm shorted across and I did this with the power off I have to mention whenever I do stuff like this I try to do as much as I can with the power off before I turn the unit back on you don't want to be slipping or anything like that because that can end badly uh, anyway so let's go ahead and turn it on let's see if the dim bulb tester goes on no it doesn't so um, check the voltage now and it's actually zero you can see down here uh, slowly bring this down turn the light on it's actually zero so that's what that that's what that is I'm just gonna go ahead and carefully remove it now with the power running and it should come back up well of course I have to use the multi I have to put the multimeter test lead on and there it is and it's back up so basically I would say yes I was uh, correct of course there are a number of different scenarios that can basically happen uh, when you work on these things um, you could have an open transistor for example then you would be getting zero output your um, your bias transistor for the base um, that could be open you can get zero output um, um, you can have an open zener voltage, um, open zener, and you'd probably be getting something out, I think, but it wouldn't be uh, um, what you're supposed to have. Uh, you could have a shorted transistor, you could have that too. So anyways, um, to bring this to a conclusion, there's a lot of different scenarios of things that can go wrong. But in this instance, I kind of like guessed, um, made an educated guess, and that was the actual problem. Not to ramble on and on here. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, if you ever work on 
a circuit like this since in those older units they you will come across them sometimes uh, thanks for watching